Hello. In this video I will demonstrate how to get from this solid to the fully detailed final product without use of any sketch in a so-called takeaway modeling technique. You are welcome to my YouTube channel called Wings in Inventor. My name is Alexander Sekirnik. Part 2. This time we will be modeling internal structure of the V-tail for the glider model without use of any sketch. At first we will create a blank standard inventor assembly and then we will give it a name, a name that will be easy recognizable. Next thing we want to do is to create a new part in which we will create our skeletal model. This skeletal model will serve us as a volume which will be sliced with the goal of producing internal parts of the V-tail for our glider. Skeletal model was deliberately selected to be as double ellipsoid because of the fact that at uh, its uh, farthest uh, right edge the two curves come together forming singularity. Modeling objects with singularity is a challenge. It would be much more easy to show you the example on the trapezoidal shaped uh, object. What I mean by that you will be able to see in, in continuation of this video. I will have to adapt some of uh, techniques to overcome the problem of singularity. At first with direct edit tools we will reshape elevator part to adapt it to accept the tail boom and to prevent both elevators deflected same direction to hit each other. Direct edit tools is a simple way of doing things. It doesn't require us to sketch. It's also easy to edit and it's parametric. Next thing we will model is a gap between stabilizer and elevator. This is just an easy way to distinguish both parts. We will offset the work plane and then split the front edge of the elevator. At all times you are able to reduce the gap by simply redefining the offset distance of the working plane. Modeling a hinge is really not necessary at this stage. You can model it on the final part. As we do it in praxis, I have decided to model a single sided chamfer type of hinge. But uh, you can opt for other shapes as well. And now it's perfect time to save your part file, return back to assembly and save assembly as well. And now it's time for the fun part, the so-called takeaway modeling technique. Our skeleton model is ready to serve us as a base for creating each individual part of the assembly without use of any sketch. Please follow me and you will see how to do it. Now you will create a new IPT part file, pick up any of the work plane, it doesn't matter which one, and then you will copy the stabilizer volume of skeleton model. You just took away some volume from the skeleton model. By splitting it, you will create your first part without using any sketch. As you can see, the newly created part perfectly fits into the final product shape. Congratulations, you just created your first part in advanced modeling technique called takeaway modeling technique. Next, you can uh, slightly edit it, reshape it uh, to fit your needs. As you want to stick to our rules, zero sketch involved, we will utilize direct editing tools to reshape our first part. It just came to my mind that this part might be too wide, so I decided to make it more narrow to save some weight on the final product. I will re-offset the working plane and get the job done. Now I'm happy with the result, so I will return back to the assembly level, save everything, create new IPT part file, import skeleton model stabilizer volume and I will be ready to model a part number 2. Part number 2 is the outermost element of the stabilizer which also involves singularity. Working with wood it is good uh, practice to make uh, this outer part separate to control the grain direction and to get the most strength out of the wood. As you may have noticed when copying the object from the skeleton model this is the second time I have used the option body when copying the volume. 
This means that I'm copying volume or solid body from the skeleton model and not just the face, which will be shown later on. So as you can see, it took just a couple clicks and you were able to create two parts of your future assembly. Very simple, very fast and very effective. Creating leading edge element of the tail unit is again simple and straightforward procedure. This time a little different. When copying the object you will copy not the body but just the face, front face of the skeleton model. By copying the face of the skeleton model you have created a surface that has the correct shape but no thickness. You will create a volume by thickening the surface for the value of your choice, in this case 8 mm. By splitting it outer part you will adjust it to adjacent element. Again with just a few clicks you have created a relatively compound shape without effort. Congratulations! Without use of any sketch you have created part number 3 of the final assembly. What follows in this video is creating part number 4 and that will conclude our video. Part number 4 is a straightforward element. We will create it by copying the volume of the skeleton model, offsetting working plane and splitting it. It is worth mentioning that uh, our part number 4 could also be modeled the way we model part number 3 by copying just the face of the skeleton model and thickening it, let's say for about 8 mm. That means that the constructor or inventor user always has at least one or two options available. I have to rush with the video to keep it short. What comes in our next video is creating the rib structure and adjusting the shape of each individual element to fit perfectly into the whole assembly. As you can see, our parts are overlapping at this uh, stage of the modeling. So thank you for watching, for staying with me. Please do not forget to press the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to hit the bell so that you will be notified about my next videos. You can also follow me on Twitter or Facebook. Thank you and goodbye.